Got some new songs too that are banging. Banging. Got one with Jizza and D'Angelo. How you do that? That's dumb. It's so dope. It's dumb to me. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> it was dumb to me. I was like Jesus, and I was trying to text her last night, and I realized that on my new phone, I don't have the information no more. And I couldn't hit ninth. I wanted to hit ninth and say, "Yo, y'all, y'all on something different, man." And la- you out. When the last time she she was here, she she made a, a legendary appearance, and we was doing something that I don't even think we ever done anything as dope as this on radio. When we had Robert Glasper here, um, the Hamiltons, Anthony Hamilton, Lupe, everybody yeah. came by. But Jesse Smollett even jumped J- in that. Jesse Smollett yeah. got in that right, and that was our Grammy Jammy Jam. But she came in and did this. Hey, give it up for Rhapsody, y'all. Oh, yeah. Chill. Carolina. Carolina, stand up. Uh, I came through, yo, Carolina reppin'. Told the whole truth, motherfuckers, I don't stress them. Shouts to the Hamiltons, you know we gon' get it. Rap came through, microphone check, rip it. Yo, uh, shouts to Sway, they hey, can't hey, me no way. Hey. Always for the culture, every day, every day. Yo, hey. I wake up smiling, Nike checks walking. This how we do it, yo, I'm just too. Talking, yeah. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yo, what's up in the gray hoodie sweatshirt, dude? Hey, we just kicking it left to right. You know how we do. Microphone burner. This is how we do to the teachers and the learners. We came from youngins to grown ups, so we gon' kill it. This is how we do. Ain't nobody here, Rilla. Oh, there it is. Ain't nobody here, Rilla. <laughs> I don't care what they say about them little fraudulent lists they've been making up, Heather B. <laughs> Fuck they list. Them lists don't mean shit to us. We all about the action. We all about the bars. Mm. We don't care about that crew. <laughs> Fuck your crew. <laughs> Talk your shit, Sway. <laughs> Talk your shit. <laughs> Fuck them diamonds on your neck. What that shit do? Bars. Don't, don't do a damn thing. <laughs> Nothing. A lot of them be fake. Can, and they're going to be stolen. Can you, hold a, can you hold a candle next to Jizza? Can you rap next to Kendrick wow. and hold your own? Can you do these things? We do these things. We do these things. Rhapsody is back. Grammy nominated Rhapsody is back. <laughs> What's up? I'm so happy to be back. It's been Fuck too long. Had been to come see long. the family. I'm yeah. supposed to come eat at your crib you too. Spoke. I ain't forgot. No, just call. I told you whenever. Just call me, man. Like that's what it is, and that's what I love about this. That's what I love about this culture. For those that are sincere about it and have experience in it, like you, you just never know. It's times we've been in the same van together, mm-hmm. jumping Straight to go up. to different places. <laughs> we bump into each other at different events, but it's just love. Like, ain't nobody tripping. And if you tripping, who want to be around that? Like, we bite. all started doing this somewhere, whether it's in a basement or your grandmother's couch or a futon or <laughs> school and class, right? Whatever the case may be, it came from a place of love. And so it's good when it's extended outside of that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, what Rhapsody does is, um, for for me personally, this we ain't going to just keep shining your shoes, but it's the truth. Um, <laughs> I, I, I feel like I could have, I could capture... The feeling that you speak of mm-hmm. when we first came into the game, mm-hmm. there was a feeling, an energy about it that made us excited to be around anything that was hip hop related. For sure. You know, and every experience was a milestone to us, you know, and each experience we got another experience. And when you found somebody um, that you thought was dope or that relatability right there, I think that helps fuel the whole energy around the culture. With all, all the interference, you know, it's almost like um, when you walk around New York City, me and Rich was on my balcony the other day, and he was pointing out that the trees that are in my backyard, not my backyard, but separating our buildings were indigenous to New York. You wouldn't know this because so many buildings came mm-hmm. and blocked the energy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yep. We ain't, we're not in tune with nature. And I think in this digital age with the streaming mentality and the record companies and all these things, they kind of block our connection to that feeling mm. that the culture give us so we re- we live vicariously through people like you Rhapsody who's never been or uh, compromised her integrity from day one to now That's and and now you blown the fuck up <laughs> give it up for Rhapsody <laughs> wow blown up. Intro. thank y'all well said. you help me I can sit behind this and watch your career still be in the mix of it right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you best believe Best it's the culture, man. You, you, um, how you been? 
I've been good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm just enjoying the journey and the process, uh, creating and now, you know, rolling it out and getting ready to put out into the world and just seeing people resonate with it. Like, it just, it just feels good to be able to create more mm-hmm. than anything and do what you love from just a genuine place where – I'm just so comfortable now. I ain't think about numbers. I don't think about no billboards. I just, I just want to make dope music. That's uh-huh. it. Wow, that's crazy. You say I, I can't think of which song it was. By the way, how do you say the title to the song with D'Angelo and Jizzy? I'm, I'm probably not saying it all the way right. Okay. Like I've asked several people that know her, but uh, the closest I get is Eptahaj. Eptahaj, and who is Eptahaj? She is the first Muslim American. Uh, fencer to perform, not fencer, athlete to perform in a hijab. Yeah, she's oh, from New York. I know who she is. Yeah. Yes, she, you see in all the Nike, Nike ads. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, she, she won a, I want to say a silver medal in the Olympics. And you named a song after her. This album, Eve. Each song is named after a different, a phenomenal woman, right? Black woman. Black yeah. woman. Whether she be fictional or real, but just uh. Somebody, whether it's a real woman or a character in a movie or whatever that you, that we're inspired by and that moves us. So I wanted to do something that showed that we're not monolith as women, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that we come in a spectrum. Um, and to show people, too, like there's so many sides of us. There's so many sides of me. Like people like to meet me and they think I'm one way, but there are different different sides of me that I always don't show. Um, so just to showcase that. But also I wanted to create something that that gave these women uh, legacy more legs, Mm -hmm. especially for the younger generation that don't know them. Like, they might not know who Amir Lee Evers is. Mm -hmm. They they might not know who Epta Hodge is. I didn't know who Nina Simone was till Lauryn Hill put me on. Mm -hmm. And I'm from North Carolina. So, you know, it's it's just multiple reasons why I wanted to do the project that way. Very timely. Rhapsody, I like that. (laughs) What what is it about you people think they know? (laughs) <laughs> like how do they perceive they, you? You I know they that. like to they like to throw that conscious backpack <laughs> rapper uh, label on me, and that that comes with something like they expect me to listen to a certain type of music, only uh-huh. a certain type of artist, um, you know, to party a certain type of way. Like I just I just think they think like I'm just kumbaya. <laughs> I'm a burn incense, and I watch documentaries every day all day about. Uh, <laughs> About Hitler. Look this way. What's wrong with that life? Get the, get the, get the problem. What's the problem with that? <laughs> <laughs> you just describe my ain't, life. Ain't no problem with it. But I'm just saying, like, you know, there's just more. That's yeah. all. What are some of your guilty pleasures? Or it doesn't even have to be guilty, but pleasures that maybe others would be surprised to know that you listen to, that you indulge in, that you that listen to, uh, or watch, whatever. Man, it's just hard to say because I ain't really listening to nothing but these beats lately. Nah, <laughs> yeah. man, son. But, uh, nah, me. But let me see. Like, people are surprised that I yeah. love Cardi as much as I do. Ah, um, and she loves you. Yeah. Uh, I like, I like, uh, I don't know, man. I just, I go to the club. I drink like you. I, you know, I mm-hmm. might back it up on somebody too. You know, Ow. I ain't got much to back Ow. up, but. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at that. I don't know. I just I'm just I'm just normal like anybody mm-hmm. else, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Um that's that's it. Like I'm I'm the home girl or the girl next door. Like that's just me. So you saying we can't watch documentaries? Yeah, we can watch, okay, I watch okay, I watch just, documentaries. Yeah, don't get it saying, twisted. Man, some nice ones out I there. do watch documentaries, just not every day, all day. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> we can learn together. Yeah. Uh, uh that's good to know though. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. But here's the thing too. I think you got a whole career ahead of you. For them to figure it out Indeed. too, right? And yeah. I, and I think they're starting to get it. You even I can't think of what song, but I was listening to a lyric and I'm paraphrasing. Um, uh, where you talk about now you got celebrities and people that's trying to get to you. You know, um, mm-hmm. but what was it? Uh, was it on? Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> you don't know your bars? <laughs> no, I write so many. I don't right. know. I can't remember all the prolific. Joints. But the, okay, so it alluded to the fact that before you, you know, people that you came up in the game you know admiring now they're admiring mm-hmm. you trying to get next to you uh-huh. well, not in a negative way but yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. kind of like an ironic way have you since the grammy nods how has things changed oh you know that grammy nomination that's a different type of validation uh-huh. and you know some te- sometimes people need that validation they even you know think okay now it now it's time like i don't i don't want to go to her so soon i don't want to attach too soon like uh-huh. Whether it's rap got to earn it or I just got to, I don't want to put my weight on it or reach out too soon. Like, they, it just provides a different validation. Even for fans, like, fans are like, man, finally, now I can go like, you don't know Rhapsody? Oh, Rhapsody, three-time Grammy nominated. Mm-hmm. Because to tell somebody, like, that that 
that's not in the mainstream or famous, like try to put somebody on. It's just like, why should I listen? And it just gives them a reason to. So it's just open more doors. It's just it's just validated me in a different way. So it makes people respect it and pay attention. It's just like, oh, you got recognized at the highest height of music. Then, okay, let me tune in. And what am I really missing? Because I might hear it in the streets, but if the Grammys dig it and dag, let me not, I don't want to be left out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. We was on it before those nods. Straight yep. up. Um, Day one. Know, I, just wanna, I just wanna let that be known. Day one. Um, <laughs> when I look at, um, one of the standout features on this project is with Queen Latifah yeah. that I saw. And I, I, I can only imagine what you must have felt like when you- <laughs> You f- already know. Yeah. What, how did it happen? Um, MERS. Mm-hmm. MERS actually did it. He was in North Carolina. They were working on um, their newest al- album, The Iliad. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he had it. We were talking about tattoos. And he pulled up his shirt. And he got a big, he got a tattoo on his rib with Queen Latifah. And I was like, yo, that, that joint's ill. And then he was like, have you ever worked with her? I was like, nah, I met him before at the White House, real brief. Uh, everybody was trying to talk to Queen. I was like, I never worked with her, but she's at the top of my list. Like, I've always wanted to. I said, I don't know how to get at Queen Latifah. Like, you know, she up here. I can't even. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he was like, you know, I think I know somebody. Like, Murs from L.A., but Murs knows everybody. So he was like, let me see what I could do. So I was just like, man, if, if you want to, go for it. Like, see what happens and um he he met up with Shaquem mm. who's uh Queen's assistant and mm-hmm. connected them with Knife so that's that's how it all started uh she called Knife and I was in Atlanta when she called Knife uh with T.I. playing him the album mm-hmm. and um Knife hit me he was like I just got off the phone with Queen she about to call you hmm. and I was tripping wow. like I was like what wow but she was everything I thought she was be mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. everybody told me. Like she's really, cool. you know, humble, yeah. cool, like straight up big sis. Mm-hmm. And that's something a relationship like with with a with a female in hip hop that came before me that I always wanted. Like I always wanted to be little sisters by somebody because I look up to them so much. So it was it was like that off rip. Like she called me and it was jokes from hello. Like mm-hmm. she put on the Jamaican accent. She was like, I'm looking for Rhapsody. <laughs> you know, like trying to throw me <laughs> off. I said, I know who this is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we just kicked it and we talked a little bit and we talked about the record. And um, you know, I told her the concept of the album what the song was about was about queens and you know i i would be blessed if she would you know do something she was like send it to me i'm down she's like i'm a fan listen to you on you know radio i always love your joints you a spitter and you know it took us about maybe about a week for me to get to la but she would just call me randomly throughout the day like and just tell me stories and Mm -hmm. just talk like i had never had nobody man or, or woman like that quickly just just reach out and just talk and be a big sis and then when I got to L.A., she came to the studio, listened to the album. She kept it funky. She mm-hmm. told me, like, you should change this and you should do this hook over or you should change the album title. Wow. And I changed it because of her. Really? What yeah. was it at first? <laughs> Alien. Oh, yeah. She gave you the best advice <laughs> ever right there. <laughs> Thank you, Queen. Oh, my gosh. Jersey, stand, <laughs> stand up. up. <laughs> wow. Queen came through in the crowd. Yeah, no, she came. came. She yeah. came through. No. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and the next day, she was like, "Well, um, let's go work on the song. Come to my house and record it in my house." What like, that house? What that thing look like? Sh- oh, come on, man! I house? ain't trying to put Queen on, business man. out That's there, my but sister too? she earned it. Okay, I just want to okay. tell you, she <laughs> earned it. Okay. I walked in. I was like, "Man, I I got these are gold right here." <laughs> <laughs> From the first step, yeah, huh? yeah. I'm, I'm like, woo, yeah, <laughs> you know, but. Yeah. It's just dope. So it was it was just a real dope night and experience. You know, she told Tupac stories. She told Flavor Unit stories. Oh my gosh. She told stories like, you know, I got to ask her questions. We worked on the music. Um, and after that, you know, she would still call me time to time. So, like, we still keep in touch. I, I texted her the other day about something I can't remember. But, yeah. What's her writing process like? Like, were you bugging out that you about to sit down and build with Queen Latifah? <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, could you even imagine that? No, I, I I never could imagine what that was like. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was dope. I you know I don't want to give her her goodies away. Oh, you on that? Wanna... Oh, <laughs> damn, I, Rhapsody. Because I think it's dope for you to have her come up here and tell the stories. Okay, I, I just okay, think it's okay, just dope okay. coming from you know the Queen's mouth herself. That's my sister. Just some things yeah. I just got to keep tucked in. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. if Queen want to tell it, I'm gonna let Queen tell it. But this one. I, I don't feel comfortable telling him. Like, Cherish it. Me. I respect yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Keep that yeah. to yourself then. Indeed. Yeah, Indeed. absolutely. I respect that. Um, You got a song with Jizza and D'Angelo. Uh, I want to talk about that. 
uh, in a moment. But uh, Tracy and I was having this conversation because you brought up Cardi B. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about how, you know, when Jermaine Dupri and that quote just went around the world when he was making his specific comments, his opinion about the rap game as far as women go. But I loved how Cardi, when we're talking about dichotomies and mm-hmm. how when it comes to black women, a lot of people look at us as one-dimensional. They don't think a Cardi knows about Rhapsody. Indeed. They don't think a Rhapsody knows about Cardi. But I love that she put this call to action to her fans on her platform. She didn't have to do that. So if anyone missed it, here's what she said. Let me tell you about some rappers that are really fucking dope that be rapping their ass off and I don't feel like they get the recognition that they deserve. Tierra Wack, Kamaya, Rhapsody, there's this girl called Oraniku, I don't know how to say her name, I don't even know how to say my own real motherfucking name, so shit, don't blame me. But they be rapping their ass off. I want you to hear these girls because these girls can rap their motherfucking ass off and we need to support them. Yeah. <laughs> That's love though. That's love. Absolutely. That's love. Right. That's love. She man to be to be where she is on her platform, she's doing an amazing job at being a leader. Uh-huh. I think um, because she didn't have to do that, and most right. people wouldn't do that. But you know she's securing what she does, and she she knows that putting light on other people doesn't dim her own, and right. I respect that to the most because she didn't have to do that. Uh-huh. Um, but that's the second time she's done it for me. Like the first time she sent out a tweet for uh, Layla's wisdom. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I met her uh, role manager yesterday, um, and he was like, "Yeah, I was I was playing the music." And it was a roller coaster love, and she kept saying, you know, what's that? Who is that? He told her he was like, run that back. He was like, she made me run it back like four or five times, and then she tweeted about it, and I, I just thought that was, that was ill. Like I, like you say, I wouldn't necessarily expect to know like if she would listen, mm-hmm. you know, to me. But it, you know, it just shows like she just dope, man, and I, I just appreciate it. Sound like y'all about to go in the studio That's together? That's what I'm thinking. Man. I wanted her on this album. Really? I did. I wanted her on uh, Whoopi. Uh huh. It just, it just felt right, like an energy. Um, I, I sent her a DM, but you know, I'm sure it got buried in all the other DMs. I think Nine tried to reach out to Coach K, uh-huh. but for whatever reason, it'll happen. I think when it, when mm-hmm. it's supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. I got Coach K's number. If you want me to? <laughs> I could call yeah. y'all. Y'all want to call Coach K right now? Like, no. <laughs> oh my gosh, Sway. Right, let's expedite this process. <laughs> let's expedite it. Um, the <laughs> this record you got with Jizz and D'Angelo, possibly because we had Kidar yeah. uh, here from um, who put out D'Angelo, who mm-hmm. helped start the really triggered the neo soul movement with Erica Badu, mm-hmm. D'Angelo, Chico what DeBarge, all these guys. Yeah, right. Soul and, Aquarius, what a time. You already know it. And uh, so when I heard D'Angelo on this hook, um, and then uh, what was the sample? Willie, uh, what was the Willie sample? Huck. I don't Willie, know, Willie, Willie Mitchell, Willie Mitchell, the Willie Mitchell, the Willie Mitchell yeah. yeah, sample that. They used for was it Liquid Swords? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Jizza used and I the way y'all the ninth ninth did this song. Yeah, he did that one. Yeah. Um, Shout so, out the ninth man. Yeah, a oh, real one. Shit. A goat, one of the greatest for ever. Real. Do it. Yeah. Straight up. Um, so what happened was that Nicole Bus record you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about when she flipped the Wu Tang joint. I I loved it so much. I told Ninth like, yo, like I need something that feel like this for the album. Like it just feel right. So he was like, well, let's just flip another Wu Tang joint and hit Nicole. So he went through the, the Wu-Tang songs, you know, the bank. He was like, I'm going to do Liquid Swords. I was like, bet. He made the beat. He sent it to me. So I sent it to her. But for whatever reason, I think, you know, she was just doing promo. She didn't have time to do it. So I did the record. And he was like, well, you know, before we do anything, we got to ask Jizza, can we even, you know, Bless use it? it. Yeah. yeah, that's that's his, like, that's his joint joint, like. His joint, mm. so um, you know, Jesus, Jesus gave us gave us the blessing, and he said he would get on it, which is phenomenal, cause he was like, we could ask him, he's like, he don't really do that much, mm-hmm. but let's just see what happens. And um, while we waiting on Jizza to do his verse, cause I'm, you know, I'm approaching deadlines, but he's also touring a doc uh, of Mike's and Men, the Wu Tang doc with the Wu Tang. So we just we wait and we probably waited for maybe like a month um, just to give him time to, to do what he needed to do. So we in the studio doing light mixes on stuff that, you know, is finished and we can. And ninth get a call and it's about just a schedule. Like, you know, when you know, when do you think he can get in the studio? What did he what does he need? You know, that talk. But in between that, it's like, well, yo, like. I'm also here with D'Angelo, and he's a big fan of yours, Ninth. He's a big fan of raps. And just that alone, like, <laughs> the, D'Angelo it, know who I am? Yeah. And he, he, he rock with it? Mm-hmm. I, I'm good. I'm good forever. So um, he was like, you know, I, I think 
it would be dope if maybe y'all try to do something. Like, I just want to play them the joint that y'all send Jizza and just see. So I was like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. I send the whole album if you want. You know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to do. You want to do a new song? Yeah, we can make a beat album. right yeah, now. Yeah, right. Like, I was ready for whatever. Uh-huh. <laughs> so um, he played them the joint, and uh, they called back maybe a day or two later. And he was like, he was talking about how, how much Jizza connected. It was like full circle for him because he and... Uh, he and uh, D'Angelo and Jizza did Cold Cold World uh-huh. together. So uh-huh. he was like, it was full circle and just how much the Wu Tang meant to him and um, uh-huh. the record. Just he loved the record, so he was just like, he wanted to do it. So I was like, yo, that's that's crazy. Like the, he's like he's like the prince of our generation. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the pop up out of know. I ain't see that coming. I still don't really know how it happened, but. Yeah. That just shows, like you know, God, yeah, yeah, yeah that's can, divine intervention. You gotta go with the flow and just and move how things supposed to move, and it'll fall into place. So that's that's how that record no came. Here it is, Rhapsody here, eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Sway in the morning, let's get it, check it out. Sway in the morning, Sway four five. My favorite artist right now, Rhapsody is here, man. Oh wow, shit is dope, yo. Yep, yep. Hold up, man. Let's take some callers real quick. Sean in Detroit, what you want to say? Sean, what's poppin'? Go ahead, Sean. Man, I'm, I'm a big fan of you, Rhapsody. Uh, I played that album, like, for a lot of people, and every time I play it, they be like, man, who is that? I'm like, man, y'all got to get up on it. That, yo, intro, that intro to that album, that's, like, one of the best intros ever. Like, I rate wow. that with, like, a steel matic. Oh, uh, wow. You know, filmatic <laughs> intro. Like, the way to set an album off, that was like, that's, that's like one of the dopest. I play that some mornings when I'm down, and that gave me ready to go get this money. Man, thank <laughs> you so much, bro. That means a lot. The thank new, you. The new album, Eve, is out this Friday. This Friday, 823. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> I, I hope you like th- this intro, too. I, I think this one better than the last one. Uh-oh. <laughs> for me, for me personally, for me personally, but it resonates how it resonates for me personally. You think that? Okay. Hey, yeah. well, you know, Sean. Once you get the album, let us know what intro you think is the best, and then I'll shoot shoot her a tweet too. Yeah, tweet it to me. All right. Okay. All right. No doubt. My man, we got Jamon on the line from Atlanta. Go ahead, Jamon. Hey, team and hey, Rhapsody. I saw your documentary on Netflix, and ever since I saw it, I downloaded it and i love the song sassy and i just am excited for the next project that you're working on oh thank you man i appreciate your eyes and your ears man let me find out you doing it in the mirror with the sassy <laughs> <laughs> i like that okay you doing that jamar yes i am uh, also, every oh, time Every time I hear that knock on that album, someone knock on the door, I always turn around and look to see who's knocking on my door because I think it's someone knocking on my door. Everybody tweets me that. They be like, man, why that knock so real? <laughs> real love. Thank you. Get that new album this Appreciate Friday. You. You're a citizen. Swain in the morning, Ar- homie. Orlando and Ohio. What you want to say Orlando. real quick? Yeah, what's going on? First of all, I want to thank Rhapsody um, uh, for bringing women and, and put the sisters on the map again, man, with something that's not sexual but something that's, that's content-driven, man. I put you in the class with Bahamut D, Rod Digger, Heather mm-hmm. B, all of the sisters that, that had content, man. You know, I'm expecting my first child was a girl, man, and I'm a, uh-huh. I'm a hip-hop head, so hip-hop is going to be a part of her life. And I want her to follow in the lineage of sisters like y'all, man. That's the stuff that I'm going to be playing for her. Mm-hmm. You know, and I wanted to tell you that song that y'all just played, I'm a gym head, right? Mm-hmm. But when, I'm, when I go from the, from the freeway to the bench, that's the song that I play to get me hype, man. That's the song that I play to keep me hype, man. Thank you so much for that vibe, sister. Thank you, brother. Congratulations oh, on that baby girl, too. Yeah, that's yeah nice. man. Shoot. Oh, you don't even know how they were shooting people in their verses? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just hey, they got to get it. They got to get it sometimes. Oh, hey, man. we got to give them all, all flavors and styles. All layers. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> hey, put respect on Heather's name. Better, put, no. better do that. Boy. Let me find out. <laughs> Shoot. Hey, before you go, though, we got this mystery sack. Uh, it was a lot of questions that people sent in, and we knew we were not be able to get them on the phone. So you know how this works. Oh, I got to pick. Yeah, yeah, listen, here we go. Let's break it down. Go ahead and reach in. Dig deep, dig deep. Uh, Put your hands said. into Sway's sack. <laughs> it's Sway's mystery sack on Shade 45. Rhapsody, you're going to do it three times. She got the first one already. Read it out loud. Okay. You got to answer honestly. 
if you could have a smoking or drinking session with any one cartoon character, who would it be and why? <laughs> With one cartoon, man, I'm I'm rocking with SpongeBob off rip. Yeah. <laughs> wow. SpongeBob crazy. I'm gonna, I want to see high SpongeBob high. Yeah, Me and, too. and a little bit tipsy. You know he got <laughs> he got them cookies. You know SpongeBob. That's what I'm saying. Probably oh, on that okay. purple. Let me Damn. see. Let me see. Edible SpongeBob. Yeah, SpongeBob. SpongeBob probably on that purple. He gonna I'm drown. Trying, yeah, we trying to catch a wave wet. under the sea. You see what I did there? Okay, yeah. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. What are the first three questions you ask God after touching down in heaven? Oh, my God. <laughs> what are the first three questions I ask God? Yeah, this is rapid fire, too. Go. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, somebody asked me this other day. Why Why is not daylight in space? <laughs> okay, that's a good question. <laughs> All right. That's why. I didn't work. Um, <laughs> Um, why you couldn't give Adam and Eve a second chance. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Damn. That's and, a good one. And two, uh, let me think. Uh I don't know, bro. <laughs> the third question for God is God. Yeah, it's God. That's what I, I don't even know where to start. Um man. Come back when you think of something. Yeah, I'm gonna come back. I'm sorry. I'm slow. Am I in the right place? I'm slow. <laughs> no, 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 that could be the third Last question. One. No, I know I'm in the right place. <laughs> Can I right. stay forever? Okay, there you go. All right. <laughs> Let me Last see. Last question. Uh, if you could have one exotic animal as a pet, what would it be? Mm. One exotic animal? Uh, man, I don't... Exotic? Let me get a kangaroo. A kangaroo? <laughs> a baby one, though. I don't want it to grow. Just stay a baby. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they grow up and become boxers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's my security everywhere I go. Oh, a kangaroo? Yeah, That'd yeah. Be like, so Ill. you know, we, we, we walking through. It's, <laughs> you know, they. Right. they, they, they <laughs> <laughs> Did you catch the joke? A yeah. kangaroo would be a bouncer. <laughs> oh, I gosh. see what you did there. That's a bar. <laughs> so connect it right there. Oh um, normally, I ask Rap City to spit, but I want to have a conversation with you today. I'll you know, that. you come back and spit another time because okay. I know that ain't a thing for you. That's something you do. That's that's a part of your fabric. But I want people to be able to hear you as much as possible. And no doubt. This is from what I've heard so far. I haven't heard the whole album. Um, but from what I've heard, man, I've thoroughly enjoyed. I listened to the two. I heard Sojourner and I heard. Um, Ipta Hodge. I heard mm -hmm. those two tracks and was uh, thoroughly uh, pleased by it as a as just as a fan and a listener. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um I'm a play Sojourner. That's about Yeah. yeah Sojourner True. Sojourner True. Mm -hmm. Uh featuring J. Cole. Um you want me to introduce you want a story. What you want? What's the story? What's Give me a story. story. Uh so um, that was the, the second song we did for the album. And I had been wanting to work with J. Cole for a minute. Mm. I, the world had been, I, like, I would get tweets so much. I'd be like, Lord, have mercy. They won't let it work how it's supposed to work. But um, we had a record. It was a Green Eyes, Erica Badu sample. And I, me and I was talking. He was like, you know, J. Cole would sound dope on this. I was like, well, you know, he's like, let's reach out. So we reached out. He, um, he was like, yeah, he pulled up to the studio. And we spent two or three hours talking before we talked about any music. And we was talking about the different generations. Uh -huh. Knife's generation, the Cole, the, me and Cole's generation, and his new generation. And just how much they're different. Like, how we learn, how we consume uh, music, how we communicate with each other. And, you know, Knife was talking about... Um, because he teaches at North Carolina Central, three universities, but North Carolina Central is one. And, he, you know, he was just talking about the younger generation and how, you know, he has he has to be creative and how he reaches them and how, you know, he gets these kids. And just based on the education system that we have now, they're not prepared when they come to college uh -huh. all the time. Hmm. Or they might not know the story of Betty Shabazz uh -huh. or want to know who Malcolm X is. And, you know, we were just talking about that. So how it's up to us as entertainers to not only entertain but to also teach in our music mm -hmm. and you know Cole was you know just really having deep you know thought and, and conversation on that so after that you know he came through I played him the joint he was like I like the green eyes joint but let me hear what else you got so I, I went into my hoarding folder of beats and I just played B I played B and I probably got to the third one he was like that's the one and he knew it yeah he just knew it he's like y'all got some paper <laughs> uh -huh. he went in the booth he probably wrote it in like 30 minutes did the hook bam 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 that's just how it was and i didn't have a name for it but based on on the hook um you know just trying to flow and find god it just sounded like to me i was like well it's got to be either harriet tubman or sojourner truth yeah. 
because it's, it's us, you know, going from a place to find freedom, but also it's talking about how, you know, in the same way they move back in the day through the, through Negro spirituals to give messages to each other. Mm-hmm. That's what we got to do in hip hop still. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's our own coded language. Everybody ain't supposed to get it. Everybody ain't supposed to decode it. You got to be cut from the culture and the fabric to really mm. understand it. So, you know, we, we got to bring the balance back, like have fun, but we also got to get back to that, like educating each other. So that, uh oh. Nah, that's real. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Nah. Thank you, shit. Rich, you hear that, Rich? He's from the Bronx. That's the first rapper ever Put signed to Motown. He knows this shit. Oh, shit. You got some icons we up in this here bitch. deep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank can't you. wait to have you back so we can continue this conversation. Yeah, yeah let's fit these bars. Okay, you know. come back with them bars, all right? You done, done that for me so many times, man. It's, it's, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Okay. It's hip-hop, man. There it is. Rhapsody. <laughs> Rhapsody. Rhapsody. Yeah. Rhapsody. Yeah.